The AKC Senior Hunter Test The Senior Hunt Test is the intermediate level of testing in the AKC Hunt Test Program. It falls between the Junior Test Level and the Master Level of Testing. To obtain a Senior Hunter title from the AKC, dogs with a Junior Hunter title must pass four Senior Hunt Tests. Dogs with no Junior Hunter title must pass five. The leap from junior to senior is not a small one. The purpose of this production is to help you, the newer handler, know what to expect when running a senior test. While many dogs and handlers can get their way through the junior level relying heavily on a dog's instincts, the senior level relies not only on instinct but trained responses that aren't so instinctual. concepts such as steadiness, honoring another dog working, handling on blinds, walk-ups, diversion birds and shots, and running multiple marks that now could be more conceptual are all skills that only come with intensive training. Think about it. Dogs don't instinctually want to be steady, watch another dog get a bird, or be handled to a location that they really don't want to go. To have a dog do those things requires training and an amateur trainer to make a commitment to a solid basics program. For newer handlers, the journey to get through senior can be full of challenges, but when successful, the accomplishment is one to be proud of. This video will take you to four different senior hunt tests. Because the senior hunt test falls between more basic tests, such as the junior hunt test, and more complex tests that you will find at the master level, there tends to be a wide range of what you can expect at a senior test. Some tests are more basic, while others more difficult, requiring more developed marking and handling skills. The tests we will take you to illustrate that range of difficulty quite well. And our expert panel of experienced judges will be back to give us their insight. So, what are the elements of a senior hunt test? Every senior hunt test must contain a single land blind and a single water blind. A blind is sending your dog to retrieve a bird that it has not seen. The distance for blinds in senior will not normally exceed 100 yards. The same is true for marks. On blind retrieves, wherever possible, and although to a lesser extent than in the master hunt test, the judges try to set up their blinds taking advantage of factors such as islands, decoys, points of land, ditches, hedges, small bushes, adjacent heavy cover, and rolling terrain. Despite these natural distractions, a well-designed blind will still make it possible for the dog to find the bird on its initial line from its handler. This is referred to as lining the blind. But most blinds are set up so that lining a blind is highly improbable and that most dogs will need to be handled to the blind. A blind is set up so that the dog is in sight continuously. A blind retrieve is a test of trainability. A dog that is out of sight for a considerable period cannot be said to be under control. There is no allowance for confusion on blind retrieves. That means when you send a dog on a blind, it must go without hesitation. Each blind is scored as a separate element by the judges, who are evaluating style, perseverance, and trainability, which includes control and response. All senior hunt tests must also include a double land retrieve and a double water retrieve. This particular land double shows another requirement of a senior test, the walk-up. Walk-up birds are thrown as the dog is in motion, coming from the holding blind to a spot specified by the judges. Walk-up birds are presented at no more than 45 yards. The dog can pick up the marks in any order. This dog decided to go for the short bird first instead of the last bird down, the goo bird. Walk-ups are designed to test the steadiness of the dog. 
While the dog does not have to sit when the bird is presented, it does need to stop its forward progress. When the bird is presented, the handler can use either a verbal command or whistle command to steady the dog, but not both. Although this test incorporated the walk-up as part of the double retrieve, the judges could also decide to set up the walk-up as a separate element, either on the way in or the way out of the hunting scenario. In senior, the dog must come from the holding blind off lead and with no collar. This is a big difference from junior. The dog needs to come to the line under reasonable control. Also in senior, the handler now must handle an empty shotgun as the marks are presented. Handlers need to shoulder the gun as they would if they were actually hunting. The gun is not a pointing device. While not a disqualification, the judges would have liked to have seen a more realistic shouldering of the gun with this handler, with the gun up on the shoulder and raised only when the birds are presented. Dogs need to be steady in senior. This dog did what is known as creeping. The dog scooted up past the barrel of the gun, but stopped on its own, without the handler needing to get involved. The handler then rehealed his dog, before sending it at the direction of the judges. If the handler would have needed to stop the dog's forward progress with a verbal command or whistle, it would have been considered a controlled break. Controlled breaks are considered a moderate dog fault. While a single control break will not disqualify a dog, multiple occurrences will result in a non-qualifying score. The handler of the working dog must remain silent from the time the handler signals for the first bird to be thrown until the judges release the dog and cannot line a dog in the direction of any fall or gun station until all falls are down. Once all marks are down and the dog has been released by the judges, a handler may give the dog a line in the direction of any or all falls, provided that such lining is accomplished briskly and precisely. In every AKC hunt test, marking is of primary importance. Ability to mark does not necessarily imply pinpointing the fall. A dog that misses the fall but recognizes the depth of the area of the fall, stays in it, then quickly and systematically hunts it out, has done both a credible and an intelligent job of marking. You're good, thanks. Another element of the senior test is a diversion. Diversions can be either diversion shots, which are simply shot from the field when no bird is thrown, or diversion birds, which are actual additional birds thrown during a test. While diversion shots must be used, diversion birds are an optional element that can be used at the judge's discretion. This test shows the use of a diversion where a bird is thrown as the dog is returning from its second retrieve. The dog must not switch from the mark and deliver to hand before being sent to retrieve the diversion. Diversions are not marks, and handling can be used to put the dog on the diversion if needed, with no reduction in score. The last element of the senior test is the honor. In senior, every dog must honor, in at least one hunting situation involving the retrieve of a mark by remaining on the line off lead while the working dog retrieves. The honoring dog must be in an area designated by the judges. The specific positions of the honoring dog will be determined by the handler provided the honoring dog is positioned to clearly see all the marks without having to reposition itself. In senior tests, a dog that is eliminated by the judges in a series that includes an honor, just prior to or while honoring, will be expected to complete the honor, if requested by the judges, a dog that is eliminated by the judges and is requested to complete the honor must be held on lead by its handler. The handler of the honoring dog may speak quietly to the honoring dog, provided the handler does not interfere with other handlers, the working dog or the judges. Note that while speaking quietly to the honoring dog is allowed, threatening gestures or any form of intimidation is not acceptable and shall not be allowed by the judges. These dogs all did a great job of honoring.
So what are the judges looking for and how do they evaluate dogs? Here you see a typical judge's score sheet. As you know, dogs are not competing against each other in a hunt test. They are competing only against a standard. And the standard should be the same for every dog. Judges are required to evaluate a dog in marking, style, perseverance, and trainability using a scale of 1 to 10 in each of those factors. These attributes will be discussed throughout this video, so we won't go into detail here. In order to receive a qualifying score in senior tests, the dog must receive an overall average of not less than 7 for the entire test, but it must also receive separate, independent average scores of not less than 5 in each ability category related to marking, as well as separate, independent average scores of not less than 5 in each ability category related to blinds. The judges will record on the score sheet, the score assigned for each ability being evaluated in each series. A judge will not simply note that the dog qualified or did not qualify. The form will be completed with the dog's numeric scores prior to determining if the dog qualified. While this may seem complicated, it really isn't. Typically, judges know a passing performance when they see it, and usually see eye to eye. Occasionally, they may have to discuss certain dogs, where they may differ in opinion. But only occasionally does it really come down to the judges needing to do the math on a score sheet. Remember that judging dogs is a very subjective task. Different judges can and will see the same performance differently. That's why they are called judges. Judges do their best to be as fair as possible to all handlers and dogs. That doesn't mean that you will always agree with their evaluation. As a handler, you have a right to ask to see your score sheet after the entire test is completed. Well, that's a quick overview of the elements and scoring. Are you feeling a little overwhelmed? Relax. It will all make sense as we get into the hunt tests. Our first stop is at the Cuyahoga Valley Golden Retriever Club Hunt Test, held in Hamden, Ohio at the Buckeye Retriever Club Training Grounds. Because of the double blind, this test could be one of the more challenging senior tests uh, that you would see. We were the, when we got here yesterday, were the, the sun and the wind. Yeah, the sun and, and the wind. A lot of uh, handlers get here and, and wonder why the hell did you set this up like this and the sun and the wind are two of the biggest factors because you can't, we don't want to run a dog directly into the sun um, so they can't see their marks and we don't want them, if they have to handle, the dogs turn around and staring directly into the sun either in the morning. So that's a big, big factor. So that eliminates some things that you could do right off the bat and then the wind was going to come today and I think it's coming it's really still right now but it was coming from a different direction than usual here so we had to right. kind of flip things around a little bit right. um, because we don't want the the wind coming right over top of the birds and just giving away the marks in the blind exactly. so we, we wanted to try to set it up so the so the wind is kind of at the handler's back exactly. here we're doing uh -huh. something a little bit different we're doing uh, a land blind first right out of the gate and then a double and then a water blind right that's right. what we ended up with we changed this about six times overnight yeah. so <laughs> i think that's where we ended up with and then, kind of a method to the madness of what we well, did and that's just it I mean, when you're setting up a test whether it's for <clears throat> junior senior or master it's you have a list of requirements of elements to the test and that's why the terrain, the site that you get, the weather will dictate how you set up your test and when you're going to put those elements in. Like, uh, you know, the other site was not suitable for uh, a land blind, so we're doing our, our blind over here. Or the water blind, it was not suitable in that location, so we're putting it into this location. So you have to, you have all these elements that you need to put into a test, but you can basically do them in the order that the judges and the site and the weather, the number of dogs that you have also becomes a factor in how you set up your test. Because if you have a huge entry, you want to get done that day <laughs> you right. have to get done so you may change the test and the elements just to keep the flow of the test moving uh, for time management so a lot mm -hmm. of times the how many dogs are entered will dictate 
how you set up your test. Right, right. Yeah, well, it's, and it's uh, not so. just the dog. It's really, you know, you're judging the team. Uh, it's the team of the handler and the dog. Um, I, I personally love to see that relationship between the handler and the dog and the teamwork. Yeah. Um, I look for that and to see, you know, who really has that communication going with their dog. Yeah. Uh, it, it's a tough sport. I mean, you got to think about, remind yourself that you're you're doing this game and this sport with an animal that, that has no collar, no leash, <laughs> its own brain, and it's uh, it's how well the you two work together. So it's really the team that you're judging and you're challenging, not just the dog. Right. Well, one last thing, and then we probably have to get going because yeah, we're getting late here, but <laughs> the people are showing up. But um, one thing that I think a lot of handlers don't understand is the blind and what, what judges are looking for on a blind. But the way I break it down in my head is marks is, are the dog's job and blind is the, blinds are the handler's job. So, and that's why it has to be team. You know, it has right. to be a teamwork. Thing. So you don't you want to make sure you get your dog to that bird, but not stumble on the bird or go around and hunt while you're trying to run the blind. Yeah, mm. I agree. Well, it seems like things are ready to go. Yeah, so I think we, they're so, getting fired up. So I think we better go. <laughs> my name's Denise Sejalon. I live in Michigan. This is my co-judge Kevin Buckley. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we've got a little senior test here for you today. So we're not doing like the typical sequence you usually see in a senior test. So you're gonna have more here and then the second series will be a little shorter. Okay, so the, um, the scenario here is, well, just what you have out here, you're gonna have two blinds and a double, okay? Uh, the sequence is gonna be, you're gonna come out of the holding blind. Um, the scenario is we're gonna fire a shot, a dry shot while you're back here. You're gonna come up to that ribbon right there. Is the ribbon right here? No. No. Just just the line. Just the line. So you're, you're, like he said, you're gonna come out of the holding blind here, but before you come out, there's gonna be a dry shot. Gotcha. Okay. So, so you're gonna you're gonna bring your dog up here under control. Because no, you know, you take your leash off and put it in your pocket in the holding blind and come out here under control. And then this is gonna be your line to start the blind and it's down by this this group of three trees here it's on the ground at the edge of the cover by the far right hand tree there's a marker down there didn't yeah I there's a marker, a marker yeah down there, so. we'll run a test dog and everybody gets to yeah, see it um so you're going to run that blind come back there's another ribbon over here where you're going to run your marks from so you'll take it take the bird here okay you got bird one will be right to left Bird two will be left to right. You pick those up. Your water blind is gonna be straight across the water there. You see a ribbon. There's a ribbon down here that we run the blind. You're gonna, you're gonna run from here. You can move all the way, after you send your dog, you can move all the way up there to handle if you have to. You have anything to add? No, I want everybody to have fun. You know, what we're ultimately looking for is how well you and your dog work together as a team. So it's, yeah, we're all for the dogs, but it's also part on you. Yeah. So we really love to see how you guys work with your dogs. Yeah, people. Who's this other person with you? Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. You're fine. We're all, all wrapped up in what we're gonna do. Uh, this is our apprentice, Lauren Gibbs. She just got married, so. She's not Gibbs, so. She's gonna be apprenticing with us today and uh, hopefully tomorrow. And tomorrow as well, so. What we're looking for is for you to challenge the blind, meaning where you're standing when you run the blind is point A. <laughs> where the bird is is point B. Draw a line between A and B and try to keep your dog reasonably close to that line. This is senior, you don't have to be perfect by any means, but we don't want to see the dog way over to the left, way over to the right, and, and let it get way off the blind. Okay, try to keep it going towards the blind. 
I'd rather see a dog have a couple refusals, or whatever, by you trying to keep it on the blind rather than cheat the thing, okay? So. We don't count the number of whistles either, so do what you gotta do, so. We're looking for control. We're looking for teamwork. We're not looking for a magic right. number formula, so. All right, remember, blinds are your job. The marks are the dog's job, okay? So how, just for training purposes, how long is that one? That's about 80 and that one's 67. All right, any other questions? Let's watch this young dog run this first series. The dog is under judgment when it is taken off Lee in the holding blind. A dry shot was fired as the dog was in the blind. This shot has the dog very keyed up and it took a few seconds to be brought under control. This young Chessie left with enthusiasm and took an excellent initial line to the blind. The slope of the terrain eventually pulled her to the right off of the line. The dog ignored the first whistle to sit. This is a whistle refusal. The dog took the second whistle and a strong angle back towards the blind ending up a little deep and right of the blind. After another refusal and a few more casts, the dog found the blind bird. This was given a marginal but passing score by the judges and they will be expecting to see a little better response and control on the water blind. The dog and handler who now has picked up the gun, now move over to run the marks. Keep in mind that the dog is under judgment even during this time. Once at the line, the handler signals the judges that she is ready and the judges signal for the marks. Pay particular attention to the shouldering of the gun as this is a textbook example of what the judges would like to see. The gun at the shoulder and raised as if shooting the birds Seven. These marks are considered converging marks as they are both thrown towards each other. These are also tight marks with not a great deal of separation. Given that setup, the judges expect that some dogs will probably need to handle on a mark. The dog retrieves the first mark and delivers to hand nicely. Although this dog sat next to the handler during delivery, sitting while delivering is not required. Although the dog took a little while to locate the second bird, it did a nice job of getting to the area of the fall, establishing a hunt, and finding the bird without needing to be handled. Now, on to the water blind. Once again, the dog leaves the line with enthusiasm and takes a good line into the water. Not visible on the video are decoys close to the water's edge that the dog needs to go through. The dog takes its first few casts in the water well Towards the end of the blind, the dog refused another whistle, got onto the shore, and found the bird. What is important is that the handler attempted to handle the dog on the shore and didn't just give up and let the dog hunt for the bird. In this case, the judges felt that the dog took enough of the handler's casts and whistles and displayed enough response to earn a passing score on the blind.
This golden retriever and its handler did a nice job on this land blind. The dog takes a strong straight initial line to the blind. The handler was quick to notice that the dog had every intention of fading with the slope of the hill and stopped the dog with a whistle sit. It only took one cast from there to put the dog on the blind. Well done. The handler picks up the gun and heads to the line, where the marks will be run, and decides to take delivery of the bird at that spot. She signals that she is ready, and the judges call for the marks. Third one. Third two. Six. on the retrieve of the first mark, but the handler is having trouble getting the dog to focus on the second mark, and not the mark already retrieved. You can tell by the behavior of the dog that it wasn't quite set on getting that second mark. The handler is trying to get the dog lined to the memory bird by closing the door with her left leg. Lining is permitted as long as it isn't too prolonged. The judges appreciated the fact that the handler didn't spend a lot of time with this and sent the dog. The dog heads for the area of the old fall and the handler wisely stops it with a whistle sit before it gets to the area of the old fall. She handles the dog to the memory bird with a few casts, most of which were taken by the dog. Notice that the judge is trying to stay out of view of the dog. Judges try to keep the line of vision of the dog back beyond the handler as clear as possible. You should also keep that in mind when watching in the gallery. Always try to keep noise and movement to a minimum to help your fellow handlers. Because the dog needed to handle on the marks, it will be scored lower on marking for this series and the judges will be looking for a clean double on the water. On the water blind, the dog again takes a good initial line, and it takes only a few casts to put the dog onto the blind. Another great senior blind by this dog. Although dogs are never competing against each other, this dog, in comparison, will be scored much higher than the first dog on the blinds and lower on the marks. When judges score blinds, it is very subjective. Not all judges see the performance on blinds the same way. Some judges, viewing these same blinds, may have different opinions than these judges did. The rulebook grants a lot of latitude to judges when judging blinds, so there can be differing opinions on whether a dog passes or doesn't pass by different judges. It's all part of the game. Let's hear what the judges had to say about the first series of the test. But it ran to, through um, a couple sets of shrubs and the handlers, when their dogs started to get 
off to the side, just let it go and get lost. And then they never tried to stop that dog mm -hmm. and get it online. So they created their own problem. And once they did that, for some of them, there was no turning back. It just, it just turned into a mess right. from there. So, right. It, it just, a lot timing on the handler's part was, was not uh, up to par at all. I right. So a lot of really late whistles. And so that was part of what we said earlier. Um, I mentioned that blinds are the handler's job and marks are the, the dog's job. Uh, and that's why you judge them as a team. Uh, but in this case, uh, the handlers were slow on the whistles, uh, not reading their dog's intentions as they left the line. Um, that would have, you know, had they been reading that the dog was, wasn't lined up properly or had they seen that the dog was already looking to go around the bush, they would have put a whistle or should have put a whistle on right away. So that's, you know, part of the teamwork, but it's, you know, part of you understanding your dog, um, being also, able to read their intentions. Yeah. It was also the problem on, <clears throat> on the marks with some of them. If a dog went to the wrong bird, they were very slow on getting it. Yes. Uh, yeah. Handling it to, stopping it and handling it to, to the right birds. So, right. Um, we had some good dogs too. Yes, they um, did. But I think we had a, a lot of very young dogs that are, I bet a lot of them, this was their first senior. Test. I, I think yes. that was a lot of it. So these dogs maybe last <clears throat> year got their junior title and this is their <clears throat> first senior hunt test. I, that's what it looked like. Yeah. Um, so it just, you know, would. I know people like to come to test, but you know, you don't want to waste your money either. You really need to spend the time and work and making sure you and your dog are solid for that level of testing. In fact, one of the things that um, I was taught was to train higher than the level you're competing. Yep. So um, that, that way when you get to a test, it should be easy and a lot less stress on you and your dog. So if you're training at a higher difficulty than what you're testing, mm -hmm. The other people, thing people I see run into are doing too many tests. Yeah. Um, they just test and test and test, and you really should not be testing very often at all. Yeah. And I know people are maybe like in a rush, they want to get a title or uh, go to master or whatever. Um, you really can't be in a rush because the dog only learns what it's like to be at a test. Yeah. And not what it's like to build that teamwork and that bond between the handler and the dog. They just, all they know is this test environment where the dogs get very amped up and excited and the handlers are excited. So I'm a proponent of less testing for your dog. Well, I think we did have one handler in the land series say that, uh, his or her, I can't remember if it was male or female, but their dog doesn't act like that in training. And that's kind of, everybody says that because everybody's dog acts different in a test because it's test day. And I think that's a lot of the issues you ran into mm -hmm. with the handlers and the blind. You have, they were late on the whistles, but was it, you know, the late on the whistles because the dog was really young? Or were they late on the whistles because you get nervous when you're on the line and it's like, you only have so many, everybody thinks you only have so many casts and you have so many whistles, like I gotta get get it perfect. Mm -hmm. And I think panic kind of starts to set in and I noticed a lot of handlers, you know, would be really quick to do flash casts or just mm -hmm. scream back. And really instead of attacking the blind in the line that they may have already been on and the dog may have turned around and pursued the line that it was supposed to by kind of yelling screaming back or flashing a cast it blew them out so they ran with the terrain mm -hmm, instead of mm -hmm. fighting against the terrain and the wind and whatever other factors were out there to get to the bird so right absolutely so it it's kind of goes back to what we were saying earlier you know the 
we have the elements that you have to get into a test and you have to fit those in where it's appropriate with the site that you're given but um, you really don't know the level of the dogs until you see them. If you watched the deep dive into the AKC Junior Hunt Test, you have already met our panel of judges. For those of you that have not watched that video, our panel consists of experienced AKC Hunt Test judges with a combined over 100 years of experience judging AKC Hunt Tests. Let's hear what they have to say about setting up a senior hunt test and many other topics along the way. To me, the biggest part of, the biggest, the hardest part of setting up a senior test is working in that blind somewhere because of the way the rules read as far as having to have them outside of those, those marks. So, and making sure you have enough water to do that and you have enough, a good place on land to do that, so. I mean, you can run that mark first before the, before the, run that blind first before the marks. Um, it doesn't specifically say that in the rule book, but it, it, it is have, allowable. I've never put a blind where the marks are going to be. I've always found some way to keep it outside. Even if you have to change the line and do something, I've always had it outside. That's why I said when we get started with this, I always look at the water for senior first. Uh, the biggest factor with that is which way is the sun going to be because you don't want these young dogs looking in the sun when you have to handle both on land and on water. So you got to be careful about that. And then you try and factor it in. Now you can get a little bit more of a hunting scenario in when you're doing senior because you've got two marks and a blind. So you can say the birds are coming in, coming this way, you got one, you got two. Oh, and somebody shot one over there. You have to get that one too, something like that. But it, it, you can get a little bit more hunt test hunting into a scenario with a senior test than basically a, a junior test. I don't particularly like to run my blind first, especially if you have to put it between the marks. Your marks a lot of times influence how, have some influence on the blind. But I don't like my blind to be just like the, I don't like it to be really close to the mark. You don't want scent from the blind to have anything to do with the mark. Let's face it, at the senior level, most dogs fail on the water blind. Right. If you have that first, then the handlers never had a chance to do a water mark. Yeah. And I try and let them get that double in first, and if they're going to fail, they know what they have to work on. But if you do that blind first, then they never get that chance to do to pick up the birds. And also, after they've already picked up two birds, they're not quite as crazy, and they're more apt to be able to run the blind, I think. We hope. Yeah. I'm probably a little, maybe have a different opinion on running the blind first, and I've done it a couple times. I don't do it unless I really am looking for a solution. But I don't have a problem doing it because I, to me, it's almost easier to run that blind because there's no influence of marks at that point. The dog has no marks to think about, it's just that blind. Um, and as far as being keyed up, that can be a good thing. Sometimes, a lot of times in senior, the problem is no goes, it just won't go. So, you know, having a dog keyed up a little bit more kind of eliminates that. So, I've, and the few times that I've done it, first, I'm not seeing any issues with it. No, again, I don't want to do it um, purposely, just to say I'm going to just mix it up a little bit. But if I have to do it, I've never had a problem with it. But that's just me. Um, I try really hard with the senior dogs to not have visible, just out in the middle of nowhere, winger wraps. I, I like to try to hide my wingers more so that they actually have to have to pay better attention because they should be able to. Um, oh, and I'm, and in, in the water you can use water that is has more stuff in it. It can have stumps, it can have rubbery because they should be able to handle that by the, the time they're in senior rather than more open water that you have in junior. When I set up, 
I would like to have a minimum of 90 degrees of separation between the two marks, minimum. And then I will turn around and split the difference and run the blind in the other opposite direction so it's equidistant away from where the two marks landed. I don't want any confusion between the mark area of the fall and, and the blind. Um, Bob uh, mentioned he's concerned about the sun on blinds, and that's, that's a, a valid concern. I'm also concerned about running a blind into the wind. Uh, if I can set it up with the wind at the dog's back, that's what I'm trying to do, if, if all the other factors fall into place. And in terms of making it more of a hunting situation, I like to use a Bubba Gunner where you're doing your walk up, the bird goes off, you're my gunner, Kevin. Bob, you're the handler and I'm the dog. And, and we're walking right alongside of you, that bird goes up and you shoot it. Uh, also, uh, like to shoot the marks, having a bubba gunner right next to us. So it's like you're, you're in a duck blind with your buddy and you're shooting. Now, don't do that every time, but I, I like doing that. One thing that I really don't like in senior are the people who come up, pick up the gun, and point it before they start walking. If they ever trip, they're going to kill themselves. And if it was a real gun, they'd be shooting their dog. You should not be shooting at that bird until you see the bird. And then you should use two hands. I, they're People who come out and with one hand are holding the gun like it's already pointed and they're not paying any attention to it. They're paying attention to their dog. And so what's the so point? The problem with the regulations and rule book, it says shoulder the gun. It doesn't say when to shoulder the gun. It doesn't say how to carry it before you get there. Yeah. It says shoulder the gun. I've had people come out <coughs> like this. Yeah. And one of the persons is a judge. Mm -hmm. now, and she followed the rules exactly, but not the intent. Right. Or the spirit of it. I like to tell people during my instructions to the to the handlers. I don't want to see you pulling an Elmer Fudd where you're walking up to the line with your gun in your shoulder. Yeah. When the bird goes up and you're hunting, that's when your gun comes up. I mean, you don't walk through a field or a swamp with your gun on your shoulder for, for 30, 40 hour, minutes. Yeah. yeah, I mean, come on. But then again, we go back to the point that most of these people have never been never, yeah, well, That's right. why I they tell have them. no idea what you're talking about. Or the John Waynes that carry <laughs> yeah. it down here. Well, it's another difference between HRC and AKC. I mean, and HRC, HRC you, would fail. you just get, <laughs> you know, you're, you are given a, a warning for gun safety, or you could get a total ejection from the, right. the event from the entire day. For a for a gun infraction, um, now they're using real guns. Right. But in AKC, if I'm a judge, I want the handler to view that as a real gun. I want that muzzle to always be pointed away from me, away from the dogs, away from the gallery, always in a safe direction. And I'm, I see way too often it's just used as a prop. Right. And One the of the prop, things that I've always just, done is I said, go get a real gun. We're not using a wood gun. It says carry a shotgun. Yeah. A wood model is not a shotgun. There's a whole sequence of events at a, at a senior test. I think when people train, they train for this expected s sequence of the way things are going to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, I go, they're going to do land first, right? I'm going to do my land blind, or my land double. I'm going to get my land blind. You're going to call me back to water, I'm going to get a water double and a water blind and an honor somewhere thrown in there. The AKC doesn't dictate that you, that you do it that way. You're, you're just, they want elements in the test. So you could run your land double and a water blind. You could run a water blind and a land double. You, know, you can, as long as you're getting those elements in to your test, mm -hmm. that's all that really matters to the AKC. So, you know, again, it's not my first preference, but sometimes the, the the order of things can get different. And I think people need to understand that it's not going to be a scripted thing every time. And if it's not, it's, it's not the judge is trying to trick you. It, there's probably a good reason why things have been done that way. 
Um, so, I don't know if you guys have any thoughts I've, on I've never on had a situation where I had to do that. Had to do it. And I do it the traditional way. The idea is if they could do my double, they could do my blind, both in land and water, and do an honor. I'm perfectly satisfied. That's the regulations, that's what they want to do, and they get an orange ribbon. I don't have to do anything out of order, and that's just the way we train, and that's the way I do it. Well, your test, where you did the blind first, you didn't have very much physical land, and it would have been really hard to figure out where to put that blind that your areas of the fall of your marks wouldn't have interfered with that scent out there. I'm with you. If, if you can't set up two marks that are separated enough for a senior level dog, then run the blind up the middle and, and do it first and get it out of the way and run your marks. And if a handler is really doing a good job of training the dog to handle, they're probably used to running cold blinds where you go out yeah, into a field and, and you just run a blind. So the dog probably is not con as concerned about it as, as the handler is. And if they're training with people that are better than they are, they're running blinds up the center anyhow. So it's not a big deal to anybody except regulations. So it's more the handler than it is the dog, I think. Yeah. So this afternoon will really be um, you know, a water double and an honor so we we did and uh it'll be a walk-up double and an honor so we we did both blinds and, and a double over in, in the morning so you're going to walk up <clears throat> um to where you, you see a ribbon we will point we will wait for the bird to come out the first bird will come right to left and land uh, just in the water on the other side of the peninsula over there the, the little peninsula that comes out. The second bird will be going um, right across the water here, um, hand thrown uh, left to right and land in a little pocket on the other side. So pretty basic water double. When you're done with that double, you'll come back and you'll honor on the right side and then exit on the right. Here we see the dog and handler walking up into the test under good control. The dog is under judgment as soon as it leaves the holding blind. As he gets to a certain point designated by the judges, the walk-up will be thrown. Again, the dog can be steadied by either verbal or whistle command, not both. The second mark is thrown, and the judges release the dog. The dog shows the dog good style here. with a nice water entry on the first bird. The judges would have liked to have seen a better shouldering of the gun by the handler. The dog retrieves the first bird and delivers to hand and lines the dog up for the second mark. You should notice that this mark provides great temptation for the dog to avoid water and run the bank as long as possible. The green line here is the judge's preferred line to the mark. Dogs taking the red line would be avoiding water. This is known as cheating the mark. In senior, judges generally aren't judging too critically on dogs that nice. cheat a mark. In master, that standard is much higher. Dogs cheating this mark would generally have slight reductions in marking and perseverance, but nothing would ever rise to the level of disqualification here. To receive high scores in marking and perseverance, the judges would like to see the dog take as straight a line to the bird as possible. This dog does a great job of staying on line and with style. He moves to the honor box to honor for the next dog. Here we see another dog and handler walking up into the test under reasonable control. As he gets to a certain point designated by the judges, Bird the walk-up will be thrown. Again, the dog can be steadied by either verbal or whistle command, not both. The second mark is thrown and the judges release the dog.
The dog shows good style with a nice water entry on the first bird and good shouldering of the gun by the handler. The dog retrieves the first bird and delivers to hand, and the handler lines the dog up for the second mark. But now notice that the dog was sent from much higher up on the bank, giving the dog little chance to stay in the water along the way to the mark. Again, these are senior dogs, so the judges aren't expecting a dog to not cheat a very cheaty mark. If this were part of a master test, the standards for cheating would be much higher. The judges would have liked to see the handler receive the first bird in the area that the first handler did to give the dog a chance to not cheat. Regardless, this dog did a nice job on the marks and will move to the honor position to honor for the next dog. Let's rejoin our panel of judges as they discuss differing opinions on the use of walk-ups, walk-outs, and diversion birds. A walk-out, not the not You mean, one. you mean a the bird is the bird is the bird is thrown, a shot is fired. You're walking out of the test. I know some people that do that. Yeah. <laughs> You should okay. talk about this one, Kevin, because... Well, let's start with a walk-up. A walk-up is, you know, it, it handler should, in, in one of those, somewhere along in that test, there needs to be a walk-up, a walk-up, whether it's done on the way in or the way out. What you're seeing 95% of the time, that is part of one of the doubles, right? Right, so right, it's, right. So it's, um, you know, it's supposed to be presented at, what, no more than 40 yards or 45 yards? 45 yards. yards. Um, the only time I really have an issue with doing that is if, you know, if it's a cut baseball field and you're throwing a mark at 40 yards. Um, you know, it, to me, it kind of doesn't make for much of a double. So, it, you know, and, and sometimes it's honestly just to do something different, have a little bit more fun, get an extra bird by doing it on the way out. It's not going to trick anybody. It's not done as a trick. It's just kind of make it more of a, a hunting hunting scenario, I guess, that you could walk out. Have I done it a lot? No. But I, I've seen it quite a bit. Yeah. See, I, I, I can't recall ever seeing it even. But let, let's go down now. You're using, now we're using thunder, so it doesn't cost anything. But if they're still using shotguns, you've got the blank to pay. You've got another bird that you have out there that you wouldn't have if it were part of the double. You've got an extra worker out there, so all of, and the extra time that it takes to do all of that. Those all could be negatives to running an efficient test. Yeah, I mean, I would never do, I would never set up another gun station if workers were an issue. Yeah. You know, I would always check to make sure that, you know, that we have more than enough help to do something like that. Um, so you guys have never done, done it, you've always done it walk up. I've done it. Not maybe not in an AKC test, but in UKC tests I've done it. it it's also I kind of like to see a dog do a plain old double. I think that there's a lot of dogs that, as they're moving and they do that walk up, they don't really pay that as much attention to the second bird as they would if you just had a, a normal double without the walk up. And sometimes the dog is not where you want it to see the second bird when you do a walk up because it does creep more likely than when you're just staying out on the line. It's, I, you're, you're talking about failures in training though. And well, it's isn't failures. Is that what we're judging, just training? Well, either one. I mean, you, what you do when you train usually comes right back when you're actually running. 
but I think it's easier not to fail if your dog is perfectly still when it sees the birds. My own opinion. Let's go back. Most dogs fail on the water line. Yeah, they do. And then there's your diversion bird. If you have enough help, I think diversion birds are good too, but you almost never see them in AKC tests anymore. Not anymore. I used to see them used all the time. used to see them all the time. They're just using the shot to set yeah, up the blind. Diversion yeah. shot to set up the blind, yeah. And, and most hunt test scenarios, there's so many shots that your dog can hear that that diversion shot really doesn't mean a thing. Well, I've seen judges set up a blind off to their left and they have a diversion shot off to the right. Yeah. So the dog's coming in with the bird, he good. hears a shot and he's looking over there. If you're using a diversion shot to set up your blind, you ought to have the shot over by the blind. But I've seen people do it just the opposite and it's, mm -hmm. it's almost a, a distraction. Okay, you got your dog's tension focused over there now and you're gonna have to get him under control, turn him around and send him in the other direction. Right. It's not fair to the handler. You do the setup and you listen and all of a sudden there's an echo right, right. there instead of over here. You might want to change where your shot is going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, echoes are problems. Car door slamming are problems too. Yeah. So make sure your uh, cars are parked far enough away that they don't interfere with the test, right? Right. What about a diversion bird? Have you had from it and seen you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, have. I have, but not, not recently because of time again, time and the extra bird and the extra person and all these other things. Now, it's not a big deal, but it's just one more thing that could slow down the whole activity. I mean, uh, I guess I'm, I'm a fan of diversion of birds. I think it tests another aspect of, of Studying. what you're doing. Um, I don't, you know, probably do them 25% of the time. To do a test, but and that's again if I have the workers and right. I know there's not going to be an issue. Um, I don't want to have send the club scrambling to dig somebody up for me so I can throw a diversion. But, but I do like to see them. I, th I, you know, and I think it's gotten to the point, at least up in this region, that if you do a diversion for a senior, it's viewed as you're almost tricking the dog. Uh, this is a, it's the trick thing. Uh, the judge is trying to trick my dog, and, and that's what I've an issue with because it's not a trick. It's, it's, a, it's an element that is in the rule book that just because we've set the expectation that you're probably not going to see it doesn't mean you're never going to see it. Um, so I think you should train for what you could see, not what you just normally see. Correct. So um, I like throwing them when I have the workers. Now, I'm never gonna throw it so it's so close to the dog it's gonna land on the head of the dog or, you know, it, it's it's a good distance away that that dog is gonna really have to go out of its way to, to switch and get that bird. But I do like doing them. I, maybe I'm a little different than some judges. I like to see some of that yeah. stuff. I think it just makes it more fun to, uh, you know, I, I like to have fun when you're doing the test and maybe some people Handlers don't want to be there to have fun. They want a ribbon and go home. But I, but I, but I do like to try to make it a fun thing that we're doing. So I, I, I agree. I think so. it's more fun. It and, and I especially like your comment about not hitting the dog in the head with it. Yeah. Because I've seen master tests where dogs right. were hit. Yeah. And that's not fair either. But yeah. right. if if the dog's got clear visibility, of that bird going down. I think that's great, and most dogs are going to mark it and, and go pick it up for you. When judges are evaluating a dog's performance, various infractions are categorized as either serious, moderate, or minor. Each fault is considered as a single occurrence and only to an average degree. Infractions can be so minor in degree that it scarcely merits a penalty. Conversely, the degree could be considered so substantial that the penalty can be severe, including elimination. These are the things that are considered minor dog faults. 
One occurrence won't get you dropped, but multiple or many occurrences can. The first one is cheating the bank on the return from a mark or blind. Judges generally only mark down perseverance slightly. Lack of attention by the dog to the task at hand is also a minor fault. Another is roughness with game at any time. Poor line manners, including healing poorly, not immediately taking and staying in the position designated, dropping a bird at delivery, jumping after a bird, and not remaining quietly on line after delivery. A dog slow to pick up a dead bird is also incurring a minor fault. Unsteadiness at the line, including creeping, is a minor fault, especially when the dog creeps out past the gun barrel. Slight freezing on the bird or stickiness, where the dog is reluctant to deliver the bird is also minor fault. A single whistle refusal, not stopping at the first whistle that should have been heard, but stopping at the second or third. A cast refusal, occasional failure to hold the line or to take the handler's directions for more than a few yards. Slight short whining or one bark while on the line or on being sent to retrieve. And finally, popping on a blind retrieve where there are no extenuating circumstances such as distance, wind, shallow running water or other conditions, which make it difficult to hear the handler's whistle. And remember, either severe or repeated or combinations of these minor infractions may summit into a moderate or even a serious fault. Also, they may be so slight as not to warrant any penalty at all. Let's move on to our next hunt test, again in Hamden, Ohio. This time, we sit in with the Greater Pittsburgh Golden Retriever Club's senior test. We'll be hunting with you today. We're gonna, uh, it's gonna be a walk up. You'll come out of the blind. Uh, probably on this, I don't care where you come out, but first bird down is gonna be over here. So you'll come up here, there's a red ribbon here. Before you get to it, I'll signal, okay? Right around here I'll be signaling, be before the red ribbon. And the appropriate time to steady your dog will be when you see the bird. Shot, and then it's gonna, he's gonna shoot and then kick right away, so. And then this will be the second bird, the go bird. It'll be out by that red ribbon there, probably in front of it. Pick that up. Come on back. Get your retired memory there. Then we got a blind over here. If everybody sees it. The bird's already down. The bird's already down now, so we'll do the test on and see what fall. happens. <laughs> Thanks. It's gonna be hot. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, no, yeah, okay. I mean, it, it's way out of whack, but yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll plan it. It won't be hot. <laughs> okay. You hear that? He said, don't come up. Okay, here we go, guys. Here so if your dog can see orange. This series is a walk-up double land retrieve and a land blind. Again, the handler and dog walk together towards a spot designated by the judges. The judges will call for the bird as the dog reaches that spot regardless of whether the handler has reached that spot or is lagging behind. For that reason, it is always good to have your dog under good control during a walk-up. This dog did what is known as popping. This occurs when a dog stops and looks at the handler for help without the handler using any command to stop the dog. Popping on this dog was most likely caused by a nearby gunshot. The judges would take that under consideration, but they will be watching closely for any continued popping on the memory bird and later on the watermarks. The dog does a nice job of marking the go bird, delivers to hand perfectly, and is sent for the memory walk-up bird. Popping once on a mark is considered a moderate dog fault, meaning that a single occurrence isn't likely to result in disqualification. 
but repeated occurrences could make popping a serious fold, which then justifies elimination from the stake. In this case, the judges know the popping was caused by errant gunshots, so only mark the dog down slightly in perseverance and marking. After a brief visit to the gun station, the dog retrieves the bird. Because the dog did not go directly to the area of the fall, there would be a reduction in its marking score. The handler lines the dog up for the land blind and sends the dog. The dog takes a good initial line to the blind, but begins to fade behind the bushes. The handler stops the dog with a whistle sit and casts towards the blind. The dog takes the cast and gets to the blind, or should I say, where the blind bird was supposed to be. In this case, an error was made and a bird was not planted at the blind. This can occur from time to time as hunt tests are long days for the workers and honest mistakes can be made. When this happens, the judges will have the handler sit their dog, the blind will be planted, and the dog will have an opportunity to retrieve the bird. The dog must always bring a bird back from the blind, even when an error is made. The judges really stopped judging trainability on the blind when the dog reached the area where the bird should have been. However, the dog still needs to deliver the bird to hand like any other bird it retrieves and is still being scored on those things. All in all, this dog did a good job in this series and will be coming back for the water. <coughs> Let's watch another dog run this series. One thing to note here is the difference between junior and senior in terms of the allowable leashes and collars. Remember that in junior, only a flat buckle collar can be used to bring the dog to the line. In senior, the dog can have a chain collar or other type of collar while in the holding blind. Remember, the dog is only under judgment when it is called from the holding blind. The handler should never leave the holding blind until a collar has been removed. In senior, the dog is always required to come to the line off lead and with no collar. Collar and leash should be placed in your pocket and not taken up to the line in your hand. This dog has what is called a controlled break. In this case, the handler had to stop the forward progress of the dog that was in the process of breaking with a verbal command to bring it back under control. This is different than creeping where a dog stops the forward progress on its own. A single controlled break in senior is not a disqualification, especially in cases like this where the dog is brought immediately under control. But the judges will be looking for this dog to be steady on the water. If it is not, the dog could be dropped. The handler lines the dog up for the land blind and sends the dogs. The dog is slightly offline to the left and the handler has a decision to make. The actual line to the blind is the green line. The dog's line is currently left along the red line, but not horribly far off line. Chances are, with no handler intervention, the dog could eventually correct itself back to the green line. Judges do not want you to take that chance. They want you to get involved. The handler correctly stops the dog with a whistle and gives it a cast to challenge the blind. With a few casts, the dog is on the blind. The judges would view this as an excellent senior level blind. Another problem that can occur on a blind is a no-go. This is where the dog does not lead for the blind on the first command given by the handler. There is no allowance for confusion on a blind. If the dog does not go, it will be dropped. 
I'll throw flat and back, but I still won't throw in. Pretty much. Still won't throw in, senior. I don't even like them in master. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like them. I don't them. either, but I'm just. <laughs> but, yeah. I like, I I like the marks if we can, to, if they have to run past the holding blind, try and have it done. But sometimes it's the right picture is not there for the dog, and a flat throw is warranted. So that's just the way it goes. And how you've already talked about having them 90 degrees apart, the marks. I mean, so is everybody kind of do the same thing, or do you ever do Pretty more much. concepts like, uh, you know, a uh, hip pocket type thing, or, or is that still I, something I've that's not? I've had some from the outside both thrown in. Converging. And it Converging. to bother the birds, the dogs at all. Again, if it, they're not close, but that concept of coming in just doesn't bother them. And some of yeah. them that are running a golden retriever test, that's one of the things that can happen. They don't have to all go the same direction. So if they're training for that, then they, they have seen that somewhere along the line. I've had, not recently though, I have had birds that crossed each other in a, in a, senior, in a senior test. Yikes. Uh, and I wouldn't run under those judges. They don't judge them anymore. <laughs> but one came, it was a pretty narrow field, and one came from this side and landed on the, yeah. I mean, and the other one was back farther and went the other direction, but it, they still crossed. Yeah. And I thought, hmm, my dog failed that test. That's why I remember it. You always remember the ones you failed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so when it comes to the water, in junior, we were saying that you know, we're not doing angle entries or long entries. What about senior? Are you going to start to do more angle entries, yeah. longer entries? Mm -hmm. Yep. Both of those. They're both. They're both on the table at that point? Right. Yep. Okay. And that teaches you what you have to practice. If your dog doesn't do it once, you go home and you practice angle entries until they have it. <laughs> and I look for more stuff in the water. They should be able to swim past stumps. They should be able to swim past little clumps of vegetation, right. to, and maybe even through vegetation that I wouldn't ask. Juniors can go through some vegetation in the water, but not much. And senior dogs should have no problem with it. And then live flyers, we, you know, they're, they're supposed to be <clears throat> supposed to be used in senior. Yeah, I like obviously that. there's some areas that have some restrictions by the property. Owner, but if any yeah, you like to do the, the flyers. I think senior. at senior mm -hmm. level they should be willing to handle that for be able to. Yeah. And again, a lot of clubs that have those tests have training days with live flyers. So if you want to take part of that, you can. Yeah. Do you normally do them on the land series? Yes. I've had one person do it in water that I can recall, but all the rest of them have been on land. I've run them like that in the water. That, that's fine. Especially if they're just wounded and they swim all over the place. Yeah, that's a real thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the dog is under judgment at what point when they when you're calling them up to the line? Yeah. That's what I do. They're taking the... When I say dog to the line and he turns the corner on that holding blind. So you're taking them off the lead at that point. They're coming off lead and seeing your mouth. Right. Yes, right. So, so what kind of behavior are you expecting out of a senior dog coming out? A little bit more than a junior dog? Or? Oh, yeah. A lot more. I don't think they should make more than one circle around the holding blind before they come out. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them are, are still a little crazy, but they should come to the line. Well, they should be looking for a walk up anyway. Every, t every minute they, they know that they're loose, they're looking for a walk up. They should be more attentive. I like to see them come right at heel. Yeah, that's but great. I've never had a dog do that. <laughs> My dog would come out of the blind at a senior level and say, I know where the line is. I'm going there. And he runs up and sits right at the line and, you know, he's waiting for me to catch up with them. But, you know, in a perfect world, they're right, right at heel and being good boys and girls. There's nothing that bothers me more than a handler in 15 feet saying, heel 10 times. Mm, yeah. That just drives me crazy. And then, uh, I tell them to go back and let's try it again. <laughs> Master level, definitely. But at senior level, they, the dog should be relatively under control. I don't care if it's ahead a little bit or behind. It, it should be up there. Yep. And if, and if they're walking up with a gun, they have to have, 
they're supposed to be holding their gun. They can't be walking like this. They're supposed to be going to the line, and you don't walk that way while you're hunting. Stop, start, stop, start, stop. And you don't make all that noise with your dog. Right. So they get up to the line, and they signal that they're ready. They should be quiet by the, between then and the time he released the dog. Correct. Again, I, I see that rule not understood a right. lot. Or maybe some people think they just get away with it. I, there's some people that know better. I'll yeah. say that, that that end up saying something to their dog to study it. Um, Basically, so. that if they talk to their dog, it's a control break. When you think about it, they're telling their dog sit because they're afraid it's going to go. Except right. for the one that just forget because they didn't read the rule book. But the ones who know, that's what that yeah. is. So that I don't think you can judge a dog on what you think he's going to do based on the handler's... Uh, judging the handler at that point. Yeah. Well, you're supposed to be it's, judging the dog. No, it's no. a team. I'm judging I, the dog. Well, I, all right. I agree with Bob. And the minute the handler gets involved with the dog, it's a handle. If he says nothing, it's fine. The minute you tell that dog to do something, you're getting... You're, involved in what that dog's thinking or doing. So you're walking up to the line, you're going to do a mark, you tell your dog sit, mm -hmm. you're automatically handling? So, no. so AKC says you got to handle to, oh, to those no. people. Well, you haven't signaled the judges yet. Yeah. After you've signaled the, the judges, judges, well, that's the words are going off, and then you say sit. Yeah. Yes, that's that's a handle. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. So according to AKC rules, you have to handle to both of those marks, right? You have to handle somewhere. Well, you're handling. Or you're handling. Once you start handling, you got to continue handling. And that's what it is. No, it isn't. It's Bullshit. A control break. <laughs> no. Wait, wait. You're allowed a control break. You're allowed a control senior. break. Yeah. So it's not a it's not a handle. It's a control break. Well, then it's not a handle. It's both. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You got any time you get involved to change your dog's behavior, it's not just all the dog and it's a control break. It's just like if your dog goes out there and master and and you and you say something, you have to start handling from there because you already got in, involved with the dog. So, okay, I, I agree it's a, perhaps a controlled break, but I don't believe it's a handle. Well, what do you consider when somebody calls a dog back from a controlled break? Just trainability. I don't know. What do I do when, when your dog creeps and I say, reheal your dog? You're calling your dog back. That's That's yeah, but is that handling? Of course it is, by your Have definition. You been released yet? Huh? Have you been released yet? Yeah. Judge? Well, no, no. Well, you're, then, it's, well, then it's not a handle. Okay, because they'll tell you reheal your dog. Well, at least yeah. my dog, they yeah. tell me reheal your dog. Yeah. So let's. We'll clearly define what these things are, right? If the dog isn't studied the line, basically three things can happen. They can creep. They can have a control break, or they can just break. Yeah. Right. right. So, what is creeping, and what what does that mean in scene? And like how far? To me, creeping is when you're past the gun barrel. That's what it is in HRC, and I use the same thing for AKC. If your dog's out far enough to get shot by the gun, he needs to be rehealed. That's that's one of the questions that you hope nobody ever asks you from the yeah. gallery, how far is too far? Because then you force the judges to say, okay, if you go to that spot, I have to fail you or I have to pass you. And judges don't want that restriction. So never, I'm saying that to the audience, never ask that question, how far is too far? I do that in the, uh, number one, I, I talk to my co-judge and I agree. When, where, where is the line of no return where you got to either call it a break or you got to reheal your dog? There's two, two areas. And I'll, I may even lay a stick down there so if you're, and tell the handlers, if your dog gets to that stick, I'm going to tell you to reheal. If your dog crosses that stick, I'm going to say it's a break. And, and I do clearly define it. But then it's a control break. You don't have to call them back. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But I, I, I agree with my co-judge beforehand, and I warn all the handlers. So they, they know coming up. I, I, I might agree with the judge, the other judge, but I don't like to tell them. I don't want to make it hard and fast because something might happen. Yeah, well, change that. that's, that's yeah. okay. What about the dog, like my dog did this last week, that takes off and goes 
maybe that far and says, oh, I don't think I was sent, and backs the whole way back, and you didn't have to say a word. So that's a, that's a control break that she controlled herself. Or it's viewed as confusion. I just use it as confusion. I don't yeah. even that. But I was like, holy crow, what, you know, what, you, what are you doing? She's, uh-oh, went back all the way up. She got all kinds of stuff up there with the line. And another thing that the audience should know is whatever the judge says, that's your release. She doesn't remember your name, the number of the dog, or anything. She says anything, and your dog takes off. That's okay. okay. This series will be a water double, a water blind, and an honor. This dog comes to the line under control and is steady as a rock when the marks are presented. Although off camera, you may be able to hear the honor dog being stopped by the handler from breaking. But what would have happened if that honor dog actually broke and swam after the marks? At that point, the judges would try to stop the test and have the handlers call their dogs in to avoid a situation with the dogs fighting over the birds. The honor dog would be disqualified. The running dog and handler would have to be rerun. Typically, the handler would arrange with the test marshal to be placed in the lineup after three more dogs run. This type of marking setup is close to being a mom and pop, where birds appear to the dog to be coming from a central station to a left and right mark. A true mom and pop would have had the birds come from a single station. In senior, expect to see more conceptual marks such as this. Notice that the handler is no longer holding a gun. Typically, the judges will take the gun from the handler as soon as the dog is released for the first mark. That way, the handler's arms will be free in the event that the dog needs to be handled. You will never need to handle a gun when running a blind. Be sure to only hand retrieved birds to either the judges or in a specified bucket. Notice that this handler elected to hold the first bird behind her back rather than immediately tossing the first bird into the bucket. Keep this in mind when watching our next dog. By handling the birds in this way, the handler kept the dog's focus on the second mark. Many dogs may be focused on the bird in your hand. By swinging that bird away from the line and into the bucket, it may cause the dog to change its focus from the mark to the bird going in the bucket or into the judge's hands. This dog's focus never shifted from the mark. In any hunt test, the line can be full of distractions to the dog. You have the judges, others helping at the line, bird racks, coolers, and many other things. For young dogs, it is best to try to keep your dog's focus out into the field or water and away from the area behind you. The handler moves over to the line where the blind will be run and receives the bird there. The dog is sent for the blind and goes somewhat offline to the left attempting to grab some land and take less water. The handler works to keep the dog in the water and making progress to the blind with a few casts, and the dog gets the blind bird on the peninsula. Back. In the opinion of the judges, this dog displayed enough control and response on his blinds to receive a passing score. Let's watch a second dog run this series. 
This yellow Labrador comes to the line under control and sits next to the handler waiting for the birds to be thrown. The black Labrador is in the honor position. The marks are thrown, and the honor dog is released by the judges. The honor dog's job is done now. Notice that during the marks the handler pays close attention to the dog while still being somewhat aware of where the marks are landing. Because these are dead birds being thrown out of wingers, the marks generally land in the same place from dog to dog. It is more important to watch your dog than watch the marks in situations like these. That way, if the dog starts to break, it can be brought under control quickly. It also gives the handler more information. For instance, did the dog watch the second mark? The dog delivers the first bird to the handler and appears to be in good position to go for the second bird. The handler elects to not hold on to the bird, but rather put it in the bucket before sending the dog. The dog diverts its attention to following the bird to the bucket. This could have influenced what happens next. Unexpectedly, the dog takes a bad line to the right and heads for some cover. The handler realizes she may need to handle the dog out of this situation. She blows the whistle to stop the dog. At this point, the handler is handling. When handling on a mark, you must handle all the way to the bird. Luckily, in this case, the dog corrected itself when the whistle was blown and no further casts were needed. But be aware, if the dog was still offline, more handling would have been required. If the handler would have sent the dog for the second mark before dropping the first bird in the bucket, would the second mark have been cleaner? Maybe so. We don't know for sure, but it is possible. The point is that you have a decision to make as a handler. It is not required that you as a handler hand off the first bird before sending your dog. It is up to you and what you think would be most effective. The handler and dog move over to the line to run the blind. The dog is sent and takes a good initial line to the blind. On the way to the blind, the dog starts to think about heading to the shore on the left. So the handler works to keep the dog on line to the blind. The handler manages to keep the dog in the water, but the dog is intent on hunting for the bird along the shore before finding the bird. Although these judges would have liked to see the dog be more under control at the end of the blind, the dog scores when combined with the scores on the land blind were good enough to earn a passing score in the opinion of the judges. So in senior, like, for marking, you're, you're expecting the same thing as in junior, just multiple times, right? As far as going straight out to the bird, getting the bird coming back to you. The area of the fall is no different, really. Yeah, it is. It, it's different it's in senior. Smaller. Well, you might have a large flyer, you might have a slightly longer mark, but, you know, basically those are the parameters. The second, second bird... Yeah. Go ahead. The, sec the second bird down has a smaller... Your go bird has a smaller area of the fall. Your, um, your memory bird, the area is bigger because of the time left. Correct. What is switching How do you deal with that? Your dog needs to go to a mark and has to establish a hunt. And you can tell a dog establishes a hunt because typically his tail will go up and his head will go down. So if he hunts around for a little while and says, eh, I'm going to go to that other, either the old fall or to the other, then in my mind that's a switch. He was over here hunting, he gave up and said he was going to go to the other bird. For that you're out. Yep. No, not allowed. Do you concur? Right. And everybody at this point should pull out their book 
and look up what a switch is and get the answer. This is the book, guys, right here. It's upside down. Upside down. Right there. That's the book. Read it, please. Welcome, everybody, to Ohio Valley Retriever Club's Senior Hunt Test. I'm Kevin Buckley, Joe Vassilani, your esteemed judges for, the, for today. Um, we'll go over what the scenario is first, and then we'll go over a little bit about how we're going to judge this um, so you know what we're looking for. Um, and looks like most of you are very familiar faces and been doing this for a long time, right? So I don't think I have to go into tremendous detail, but um, we're going to start off with a walk-up. So you're going to be in that holding blind back there. You're going to pick up the gun. Um, you're going to walk up the hill. Once you get to the flat part of the hill, you're going to have a walk-up come out. And from back there, you're not going to be able to see really, but uh, a walk-up is going to come up right on the hillside. There's a cut. Uh, a cut that goes right up that hill, which you'll see from over here. From over there, it probably looks like it's a lot of cover. But there's a cut, and it's landing right in a big cut area of grass. So your dog's gonna see that. Um, you're gonna come back, uh, obviously deliver to hand, um, and then you can walk up to the area of these decoys up here, and you're gonna run your land blind, which is right in the middle of the field there. You see a, a ribbon? right on a piece of goldenrod, right in the middle of the field. It's about 55 yards. Um, you're gonna pick that up. Again, deliver to hand. And then we're gonna go on a little walk. Um, we, we couldn't, uh, uh, this was not our first choice, but just by this, this pond really has very few entry points that, that we can actually use right now, all, all the cover. Um, so, we had to sweat things up a little bit. So you're gonna do your land blind and then a water double. So we're gonna take a little walk down there and then we're gonna do a water double and we'll, we'll show you that. Um, anything to add to that? In, in the walk between here and there, we don't need to see ring obedience healing. Let's get over there. <laughs> you're, you're hunting, keep the dog <laughs> with you, keep him in control, keep him out of the water, keep him out of the ducks. We're good with that. <laughs> okay. So how we're going to judge the test, obviously this is an AKC club, we're, we're judging just out of the AKC rules and regulations for retrievers, so it's, it's AKA the rule book. So a couple of promises we'll make you, we're not going to make up any rules that aren't in there, and we're not going to waive any rules that are in there. Okay, so we're going to go by that rule book. So, um, you know, we're not going to make things up like you can't say no, or you can't do this, or you can't do that. If it's not in the rule book, it's not a rule. So. Um, if you've read the rule book, you're, you're good to go. So, we're going to judge. Like all of you guys know, or most of you know, you know, we're just looking for the, f the four things we're judging. Um, style, perseverance, marking, and trainability. So, um, everybody who's been around a while knows what most of those are. But um, for trainability is the big part, so it's going to follow you everywhere from that holding blind back there to when you're back on the leash. Okay, so when, as soon as you are coming from the line, we're, we're judging trainability. Specifically from that holding blind up here, we're judging control. So, and again, we're not looking for that dog to be in lockstep with you, just in reasonable control. You know, we don't want it running in the, in the trees and all over the place, but just walking with you. If it's getting away from you, just try to get it back into somewhat of control. Um, come up here, when that walk up goes off, then we're, we're judging steadiness, okay? So you can, when that goes off, you can either blow your whistle or you can use a verbal command to have it sit, not both. Um, we'll release you on that. There's not going to be a call on that um, for a walk up. So then when you go to your blind, we're judging response on, on the blind okay so what we're looking for is teamwork with you know it, this is senior we're not looking for perfection by any means on on these blinds and joe and i are on the same page with this very much we're not going to count numbers of times you're blowing the whistle uh, you know we want to see you try to do that blind you and your dog as a team try to do that these blinds okay so that means 
your part is to give it the commands to in the cast to keep it online to that that blind reasonably the dog's job is to take those commands so we're just judging response on that we'd like to see or i prefer <laughs> to see you try to keep it online and maybe have a few refusals then let it get offline uh, like i said we're going to be we're both very lenient on, on the blinds i would say very tolerant on, on the blind so but cha challenge the blind but challenge it run the dog from point a to point b okay so any questions on that we'll move down and show you where the marks are going to be so it'll be just one land single right yep one oh, land single okay just pick okay. it up come back and okay. then you're going to run the blind okay and then we're going to that's that's not your land double that's later on oh okay <laughs> And then we'll move down there. You're going to walk down here, like Joe said, just, just get on down here under reasonable control, but don't have to be a wedding march. Do we decide which one's first? You care? Okay. That's got three on it, right? Yeah. This is where you're going to run your double from. Just come into the holding blind here. You can run from anywhere in here. First bird is going to come out from that station, land pretty much in front of the grass. Uh, it's not, it, we're not trying to get it in the grass. Um, it's going to be in front of the grass, um, out in this direction. Second one is going to be a big mark. Um, that's a big winger. It's going to throw it probably out past where those decoys are. Okay. Um, so that's your double. We tried to clear paths in here with a with a boat <laughs> to try to, to get uh, a little bit of cover. Uh, again, this wasn't our first choice to run from a dike, but there's just there's we there's just not there's <laughs> there's uh, not much available. So <laughs> so we're trying to make it as fair as we can. So. And deliver to hand and then we're Start come over. back out put your dog on lead and and um you know there's a bit of way as soon as you come out of here as soon as you come out of, as soon as you're behind the judges i expect us to be right here watching so as soon as you get behind us you're allowed to go back on lead and then head out questions Will there be a then? Will there be another land series yeah. after mm -hmm. this? Yeah, okay. we still got your land double okay. and some a shot flyer and a water blind. Okay, and, and an honor. Stuff. Okay, and an honor. Perfect. You're the shot flyer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 This dog is well behaved in the holding blind and ready to start its walk up. As mentioned before, walk ups do not always have to be part of a double. In this test, the walk-up is being done as a separate exercise. The handler removes the collar and lead while still in the holding blind and puts them in his pocket so they are not exposed. The judges call the dog and handler to start the walk-up. The dog is now under judgment. The walk-up bird is thrown and the handler steadies the dog with a verbal sit command. One of the challenges in a test like this is that many dogs are expecting a second bird since they have been running so many double retrieves. The handler really had to work to get his dog to focus on the walk-up before sending him. The dog ultimately does a nice job of retrieving the walk-up bird. It's like, surely there has to be another bird. <laughs> The handler gives the gun back to the judges in order to run the blind. In this case, the gun is a dummy gun. In some tests, real functioning guns are used. Always make sure the gun is in a safe mode before handing it to the judges.
the handler sends the dog for the blind. This dog demonstrates precisely what the judges thought they might see on this blind, with the dog running in the direction of the cut areas of grass instead of going through them initially. This makes the dog start off on a line left of the blind and required the handler to get the dog back on line. The dog is taking quite a few casts to get to the bird, but the judges aren't too concerned. The important thing to note is not the number of whistles, but rather how the dog is responding to the whistles and casts. In this case, the dog did a nice job of working together with the handler as a team to get the blind bird. No. The dog delivers to hand, and the judges give the gun back to the handler for the water double. In this test, the dog needs to walk to the line where the marks will be thrown while under reasonable control. This dog does a nice job staying close to the handler and not forging ahead or lagging behind. Once in the hunting blind, the handler signals for the birds. The dog is steady for the marks and released for the birds. You may be able to hear that the dog was slightly noisy with some whining and slight barking when released. How big of an issue is this? The rules state that dogs that bark or whine online, in a blind or retrieving, will be scored low in trainability. Loud and prolonged barking or whining is sufficient cause to justify grading a dog as a zero in trainability, making it a serious dog fault. This dog had only some slight noise that wouldn't be considered loud or prolonged, so the judges did not view it as more than a slight markdown in trainability. As a practical matter, when the dog is noisy is just as important to some judges as how much noise is present. A dog that is noisy before the birds are down could be considered as disturbing the hunt. A dog that is noisy after the birds are down isn't disturbing a hunt since the gunfire would have already been fired. The dog delivers the first bird and takes a good line to the memory bird. I love those white belly drinks, you know? <laughs> he needed that after that start. <laughs> Tip the bird boy. <laughs> Good dog. Hey, sir. That's it. Come on. Can't see you. It's got the wing over his eyes. I don't know. I have one in my truck. Come on, buddy. Got the dummy gun. He does a better job on delivery on this bird than the first one. All in all, a good performance and a passing score in this series. This dog will be coming back for the second series. We ready? Okay. Now, let's watch this handler and yellow lab. 
The wind is swirling and has really picked up now, and there's no telling what effect that may have on the test. The handler grabs the gun and heads for the walk-up under good control. This time, the handler used a whistle to steady the dog instead of a verbal command. This was just her choice. Either is allowable. Just like the first dog, this dog is really looking for that second bird to appear. The handler works to get it focused and sends for the walk-up. The dog does a nice job on the walk-up bird. Now, let's see how this dog does on the blind. Remember, the first dog went left following the pattern of the cover. What will this dog do? This dog ignores the cover strips and perseveres through them, taking a much straighter line than the first dog. Just a few whistles and casts, and the dog is right on the bird. Nice job. Although both dogs did a nice job on this blind, the judges scored this land blind higher than they did the first dog because of the nice line taken by the dog, displaying perseverance and excellent response on the cast. The handler takes the gun and heads for the hunting blind, where she will run the marks. Again, this dog is under good control, staying close to the handler. She signals for the birds, and the birds are thrown. <coughs> this dog, too, has some noise at the line comparable to the first dog. Again, the judges didn't see this as much of a markdown as the noise wasn't very loud or prolonged. The dog has an excellent delivery of the first bird and a nice line to the memory bird. Yes.
No problem with this double for this dog and a nice job on this series. What is a moderate fault? Infractions in this category may actually be so slight as to warrant their consideration as only a minor fault, or they may be so severe as to warrant their consideration as a serious fault. Also, repetitions of a moderate fault or a combination of several of these faults may readily convert the total infraction into a serious fault. In plain English, it's not just what the dog does wrong, but how often. More frequent occurrences of the same little problems make them big problems. In fact, Many of the moderate faults are nothing more than minor faults repeated over and over. The first moderate fault to mention is failure to mark the area of the fall, requiring that the dog be handled to the bird. Worse on the first bird retrieved than on the second one. While the rulebook does not say you cannot handle in both series and senior, as a practical matter, almost all judges would like to see a clean double in one of the series. While popping on a blind is only a minor fault, popping on a mark is a moderate fault. In senior, a controlled break is a slight break where the dog is brought under immediate control by the handler. A few things distinguish a controlled break from creeping. For a controlled break, either the dog has progressed too far forward, past a point acceptable to the judges, or the dog's forward progress was stopped by the handler's command. Judges will not always tell you where that controlled break line is. Some other moderate faults are the same as minor faults, but occurring more frequently. These include multiple whistle refusals, multiple cast refusals, whining and barking, excessive cheating, and finally, some more style-related faults, reluctance to enter water, and hunting in a disinterested manner. What are you looking for when somebody is running a, either a land line or a water line? Insane. Well, I'll start. The, the, the terminology is challenge the blind. And most judges want you to challenge the blind. They don't want you to go this way, take a big over and get it. They want you to keep going, whether it takes angle backs or overs or whatever it takes, they want you to keep going straight towards the, the blind. And that's it. And most, again, most judges don't care how many times you blow the whistle, as long as whatever you ask to do, the dog to do, it does it. Then you get into scalloping, which sometimes you say back and it goes and it does this. Now, it did take the turn, it did go back, but it didn't persevere. So then you, the judge is going to be looking either perseverance or trainability, but it did take the cast. And those are the things that you have to work on. But at the senior level, if the dog, you give a, a left back and it goes left back, and it, even if it doesn't go very far, they're not going to mark that against you. If, you. if you give an over and it goes this way, that's a refusal. So you're judging whistle refusals right. and cast refusals, right? Right. And scalloping, you consider that to be a cast refusal? No, that's either per perseverance or trainability. Uh, okay, okay. Here's where AKC and UKC really differ and people have a problem. In, in UKC, if your dog scallops and does not change where it is going to end up, if every single cast you can scallop and go farther out, but you have not changed the angle of where that dog's going or where it's going to end up, that is a refusal because you have not changed that dog's mind one bit about where it was going. But that's not defined anywhere in our book. Right, yes. but that's a, a scallop there is a refusal and a scallop in AKC, as long as it's going farther out, mm -hmm. Even though it might, it maybe it's going farther away from the line to the blind, it's not a refusal. Right. And that's where judging comes in and yeah. makes a decision. Mm -hmm. Well, there's like got to be a point us. where you say your dog refused your casts. You gave him left angle back, and he kept going, yeah. scalloping to the right. He didn't take your left angle back. He scalloped to the right. He, it's a cast refusal. Or perseverance, as long as he went. Well, that, that's a little different scenario. If you gave him this and he did this, that's a refusal. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But if he went this way and then scalloped over here, that's not a refusal. If he went the direction you told him to go, yeah. Yeah. that's not a refusal, no. Right. Serious faults, in and of themselves, justify elimination from the state. <laughs> 
Let's cover just a few of the serious faults that we haven't yet focused on. The first is breaking. This is where the dog leaves for the mark before being released by the judges, as we see here. The close bird is often called a breaking bird, since the closeness to the dog makes it that much more tempting. Breaking is an automatic disqualification. Freezing is a refusal to release a bird on delivery for an unreasonable period of time, or until compelled to do so by severe methods. Hard mouth is badly damaging a bird or making it unfit for human consumption, which in the opinion of the judges was caused solely by the dog without justification. Returning to the handler without the bird before finding the bird, with or without having been called in, except on a marked retrieve where the dog was confused as to whether it was really ordered to retrieve. Failure to enter. Either rough cover, water, ice, mud, or any other situation involving unpleasant or difficult going for the dog, after having been ordered to do so several times. Failure to go on a blind, as there can be no confusion by the dog on a blind as to whether it was really ordered. Failure to deliver to hand, or simply being considered out of control. Two serious faults involving marking are switching, which is leaving an established hunt to go find a different bird, and going back to an old fall, where the dog heads back to a previous retrieve already made. Here is a short list of other serious faults, most of which have been covered in this video. Blinking a bird by failing to pick the bird up and leaving it after making the find. Failure to find a bird, which the dog should have found. Retrieving a decoy. And lastly, loud and prolonged barking or whining. Do you have any formula? Uh, it it's a cat that feels a little bit confused when some judges have a Every judge is have, has a magic number. Some, some will say guys, three, some will say five. Do you have a number? No, I'm saying no. you get to say what the number is, but do you have a number that you're, you know, you're... When I get disgusted at how bad it is, that's, it, that's enough. Yeah. We close the book. <laughs> I kind of think that a senior level dog should take about half of its whistles at cast. I think it's more important that they take their whistles than their cast. I, I, if they don't stop on a whistle, I think that's worse than if they screw up a cast. Because I think a dog should stop on a whistle no matter what. But that's my own opinion. Um, I like to, and it depends on on the blind. And you can't say I want my dog to take this dog to take half of its whistles and cast when it does a perfectly straight line seven eighths of the way out there, and then you have six whistles and they refuse three of them at the very end. So it's it's a judgment call. It's subjective. Yeah, it is subjective. So nobody really has a, no formula. a, a magic, a magic I'll, number. I'll but talk, I, I I'll talk to my like co-judges you know, yeah. and we'll, we'll discuss it. And I like seven for some reason. If, if you get a combination of seven, seven whistle refusals and cast refusals, I don't think you're doing a good job. And I'll probably mark you very low or fail you. I also think it's very important that you take in a series. I hate it when a dog, you give it an over and it keeps going back, and you give it an over and it keeps going back, you give it an over and it keeps going back. If you keep, if it take, refuses three casts in a row the same direction, shame on the handler. It already told you it wasn't going to go over the first two times, so change it somehow so that the dog can be successful. I mean, give it, AKC doesn't like whistle ins either, but whistle it in just a little bit so that it stops and says, whoa, I'm not making any progress anywhere. Maybe I better, be, you know, listen. But four, three to five whistles. They, and cast them with no correction I don't like in a row. I have a difference, in my opinion, a whistle in and a straighten up. Okay. The, 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 in my mind, those are two different things. If my dog is sitting sideways, I might go two, 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 two straighten up. Yeah. I certainly won't call them 10 feet in. That's something different. Because as soon as you did that, you're not challenging so the blind. blind. All right. Uh, technically, if you do an over, you're not challenging the blind either because you're not making any progress towards the blind. But I don't. I wouldn't count that. 
But anyhow, that's just the way I do it. But while I'm judging, if he and I were here and we're watching some person up there doing something, I'll look at him and he'll look at me and we'll go. Yeah, and, right. And, and I have to tell the people that a seven is just as good as a 10 when we're adding up the score. So don't worry if you don't get a 10. As long as you're averaging that seven number, you're okay. Handling in multiple. Can I, before you get started, what I hate to see on a blind is you send your dog toward a blind that's 45 degrees away. And it gets out there and it, it winds up 90 degrees straight in front of you. But it smells that bird and it makes a beeline to the bird. That dog did not handle to the bird. Huh? Yeah. So they cheated the blind. Yes, I will fail that dog, and I was you taught me that. That's, it didn't challenge it the didn't blind. Challenge it didn't challenge the blind. Back to the right. Absolutely. Right. Yep. What about a blind, a blind that's, say it's a water blind, but the, the blind is 20 yards up on the land, and they let it get out of the water and stop handling at that point, and let the dog hunt it up once it gets on the you got to handle to the bird. Yeah. Now, here's a, here's a difference between the two venues. You're allowed less leeway in a UKC test than you are in a, an AKC test. If it, it's downwind and he's 10 feet away and he smells that bird and he goes and gets it, I'm gonna pass that dog every time. In a, the other venue, you've gotta sit your dog and give him the over to get him there. They want you to handle it directly. That's close enough for me in a hunting situation to get the bird. I think you know, letting the dog run around the hunt that last 20, 30 yards to me is a failure. Yeah, yeah so, absolutely. Because you, know, you, you quit on the dog. What if you have a dog like mine, who you get, takes beautiful lines, gets almost to the bird, and you have 10 whistles, and he takes them, but he's all over the place and just doesn't find the bird? Or just on top of the orange bumpers because he can't see orange and then you have to tell him fetch because he doesn't realize he's there. Like a golfer that has a 300 yard drive and 12 putts. Right. <laughs> he doesn't go home with the money, does he? Yeah. No, and it, it's frustrating as can be. Yeah, you gotta finish yeah. strong. I mean, I've been told your dog did a great job and you got 10 feet away from the bird and you kind of lost control of him. Yeah. But it wasn't bad enough that we're gonna fail you. But I want to tell you, you lost control of your dog right at the very end. Well, so, even if you didn't lose control and he just doesn't come up with it. You know, well, that's, that's a very, I mean, I've had it happen a couple of times yeah. in all these 20 some years. The, the, the dog stepped on the bird and put it in the mud. Maybe. Well, that's happened. So that's happened. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Um, Few things from this morning, just to, to mention. I think we saw a lot of good, a lot of good stuff this morning. Just a few, a few people that um, we want to see some more control on the blind, on on this blind than, than this morning. And we'll mention that to you whenever we, whenever you come up to the line, so you're not caught off guard. Um, also. I don't think we'll have the problem here, but we, because a lot of the dogs on that walk up were turning to look for another bird that wasn't there. We had a lot of, um, you know, nudging the dog back over. That's a, a no, no. Um, don't touch the dog. Um, if it's doing that, um, this series will have a flyer in it. And, uh, with the flyer comes the, possibility of a no bird well, much more than if you don't have a flyer so just keep in mind that we're the only ones that are, are going to stop the test just keep going um, if if something happens with that flyer and it goes somewhere we didn't want it to go just keep going if we don't say no bird and we'll we'll figure it out after that um, but your dog may be keyed on it and ready to go so um, don't stop on your own um, doing that so <clears throat> um, scenario here, um, well, if we have a double uh, with the flyer being the go bird and then uh, a diversion bird on their way back from the last bird that they retrieve. Um, when you're done there, the order is going to be 
the left bird, left to right. You see a ribbon out there in the field. The flyer will be the grow bird again, left to right. Right up here, there's a ribbon up here. The diversion will be a very high bird coming out, landing over here somewhere. Uh, we're gonna do our very best not to get that diversion bird close to your dog. We're, we're just, yeah. Hope, you know. Hopefully they're coming back from this bird <clears throat> and there's gonna be good separation. If they go out of order and pick that bird up first, we can only do what we can do. I'll pop it as soon as that dog turns around. Fast dog may catch it. Yeah. Um, Get on your whistle. When you're done with that, your last part is, is the water blind. So uh, the, you'll all get to come up here. The blind is there. You'll see a ribbon right across this marshy area. And that is basically, go ahead up, up there. Um, we ran dogs through there yesterday. It's mostly running water. There may be three or four feet that they're at to swim, but most of it is, is, is running water from here to there. Um, Run from up there? Where well, poor Joe is, right. yep. Anywhere, anywhere here is your blind line. I don't care where you move the handle. That's, that on the That's why we put it there. I had that specially ordered. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't say that. Just a Joe, be careful everywhere walking around. There are stumps and, and little little things. Just watch your footing everywhere. It's We tried our best, but there's a lot of, lot of stuff <laughs> over here, so. That's the test. Uh, well, not quite. You'll come back from that, and the honor will be over here uh, on this side of the decoy. So, Work, working dog is going to be from this decoy over. Honor dog is from that decoy over that way. So, we and just I, come out of the holding blind, go behind the honor dog along the along the pond, and then anywhere from this decoy, pick a spot, kind of a thing. Um, I'll release the working dog. I'm probably just going to say dog. <coughs> I'm not gonna remember numbers, so I'm gonna say dog. Dog goes on my voice, dog wins on a tie, so. With every series, Guns there up. is a test dog. The this test is dog is up. to Just demonstrate the mechanics of the test. Let's watch this test dog run this series. Oftentimes, this is the first time that the judges are seeing the test mechanics in their entirety. It is always a good idea to be at the test in time to see the test dog and hear what the judges have to say. Sometimes, the judges may tweak the location of the marks or other mechanics based on what they see from the test dog. If that happens, the judges will inform the handlers. If significant changes are needed, a new test dog will be run. With this test, no changes or tweaks were needed. This test has a live flyer as the second bird. These are required in all AKC senior tests, so you must train for them. A warm, freshly killed bird or wounded bird can be a different experience for a young dog. There is also a greater temptation for dogs to break on a flyer. Do not let the first time your dog encounters a flyer to be at the test. In some of the other tests in this video, the property owner did not allow the shooting of flyers on the property for safety reasons, and the clubs had to apply to the AKC for exemptions to have it be allowable not to use flyers. Unlike when dead birds are thrown, it is more important for the handler to note where the bird lands, as each flyer can be different. When a flyer is the last bird down, it is said to be in order. When it is not the last bird down, it is said to be out of order. This dog overruns the memory bird slightly but does a nice job of coming back and locating the bird. On its way back from the second mark, the diversion bird is thrown. You can see that this is an immediate temptation for the dog that heads in the direction of the diversion before being called by the handler. The dog makes a good decision and ignores the diversion bird. If the dog would have dropped the second bird, and picked up the diversion bird that would be considered a switch and the dog would be disqualified. To avoid any question of which bird was brought back, the diversion bird typically has been prepared by the judges by attaching an orange ribbon to it. Note that diversion birds are not considered marks. The handler could handle to the bird if needed with no reduction in scores as long as the casts and whistles were taken by the dog.
Now, the handler moves the dog into position to run the water blind. This blind is run mostly through running water with higher cover. The cover makes it hard to see much on the video, but this dog did a nice job of taking a reasonably straight line and a single cast to the bird. Handlers running this blind needed to be quick on the whistle to keep the dog on line. Too far left or right, and the dog would be out of sight. The handler and test dog did a good job of demonstrating the mechanics of the test to the handlers. Now, let's watch our yellow lab from the first series run the series. Note that this series is not a walk-up. The handler simply goes to the line and sits the dog. On our goat dog, excuse. The dog had to put on a bit of a hunt on the flyer. It could be that the bird wasn't quite dead and moved its position a little after landing. Another factor could be scent. With flyers, the scent in the field could be more widespread since the flyers are landing in different places. Feathers also tend to accumulate in the area of the flyers from the shots. Judges always try to take these considerations into account when judging a flyer. The dog retrieves the memory bird. On the way back, the diversion is thrown. This dog really wants that diversion, but correctly avoids switching. You can see that just like in the walk up in the first series, the dog is looking for a second bird which just won't be there. The dog eventually refocuses and retrieves the diversion bird. Now it is on to the blind. The dog takes a decent initial line, but eventually starts to get on the edge of being out of sight. A little more to the right, and the handler would have been in a bit of trouble. The dog does take the casts and gets out of the potential trouble, and finds the blind bird. Nice recovery. The last part of the test is the honor. This is particularly challenging when the dog has to honor a flyer. As mentioned before, the handler can talk quietly to the dog while on honor, and the dog must be positioned so that it can see both marks. One judge typically stands at the honor position to watch for those things. A good practice is to always check with the honor dog handler to be sure that they are ready before you signal for the birds. This can help both of you. You do not want the honor dog to break when you are running your dog. A simple check with the honor dog handler can help to reduce the chance of that happening. Just look at the honor dog handler and ask, 
is the honor dog ready? After both birds are down and the dog is sent for the first bird, the judge at the honor position will release the honor dog, typically by saying honor dog released. At that point, the dog would be put back on lead and is no longer under judgment. Just so people understand, if your dog is out there and, it, and you've handled it to the blind and it goes over here and you handle it back to the blind and it goes over here, handle the blind, two things happen. Either it got sunk or the bird boy forgot to put it out there. Uh -huh. Most times the judges will say, sit your dog. They'll either walk out or have the bird boy go out and see is there a bird there? And if there isn't, they'll have the bird boy give them a bird. Yeah. Happened put to it me on the ground, fetch it up yeah. and bring it back. It happened to Kevin. How that dog, how many times did your dog go right past where the bird should have been? Ran out of been? six times. Six times. <laughs> Before they finally realized it wasn't a bird there. Yeah. But that happens. It, I mean, it does you happen. Know, 85 degree day and with a 40 of the dog and yeah. you know okay, one of the things out there. we discussed with Junior where it said that we can't that you can handle as many times as you want to on, on marks but in senior um, I'm not sure if it says only one mark or but I know most judges would like to see you have one clean double yeah. differentiating you from a junior dog to a senior dog I don't know anyone that really would pass someone who is handled on both the land and the water. And that, that might be an old wives' tale, but it's just something that yeah, judges do. There's, there's nothing I have... in the rule books stating you can't handle multiple times. Yeah, I would like to see that clean double. But there are some situations so maybe where I might let it slide. Say it was in the mud and they just couldn't dig it out. And three feet from that bird, if I go two, 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 get the bird. Right. I, I might might be okay those, those are very rare situations yeah. I, I right. saw one of those um it doesn't matter if i tammy adds it at the one test of buckeye had a, a senior dog that went out got one bird came back went and the other one was in the toolies hunted and hunted and hunted never left a very small area but it was under some of those leaves and just couldn't and it was a young dog it was crazy and just couldn't come up with the bird. She waited till the dog was in a perfect position, whistle sat it, didn't say anything to it for till it settled down a little bit, said fetch. And that dog was like, but because he was slowed down, took his time and said, fetch what? And he saw it and picked it up and brought it. I thought that was the best I'd, I'd ever seen somebody use handle in the area. Yeah, that's good. I mean, I, I was really impressed. It's a shame somebody didn't have that on film because that would have been a good, good thing for people to see. One of the things I hear all the time, and, and it's probably in this region more than anywhere that I hear is, is the word using the word no in a, in a test. A handler using the word no. Uh, there are judges that tell them that that's absolutely forbidden. I've seen dogs fail for a handler saying the word no. Well, they say, yeah. it's intimidation, it's, you're out if it isn't. Like when you're lying your dog, no. Yeah. Two different situations. Mm -hmm. So I it's, agree. A, it's an urban myth, right? You can't Another say no. Another one of those, yes. Yeah. yeah but the, you've got to know ahead of time what the judges, how they feel about it. But that's one of those questions you don't want to ask. <laughs>
but on a slight hill that sloped from left to right. The judges ran six dogs on this blind, with all six taking a hard turn to the right, down the hill when they were about two-thirds of the way to the blind. Far more than could be accounted for by the known factors of the test. The judges suspected that there was more going on here than met the eye. After some discussion, it was determined that a wild flock of turkeys had taken up residence in that field overnight in the exact area that the dogs were heading on the blind. Those turkeys, although no longer in the field, left some significant scent behind. The judges had a decision to make. They could just go forward with the next dog, or rerun the dogs that had already run on a new blind. Ultimately, they decided to change the blind to what is shown in this diagram, far away from the problem area. The lesson is this. If you run early, in the running order and your dog does not do well, and you just don't know why, don't pack it up and go home just yet. Stick around for at least four or five dogs to see what happens. Although rare, it is possible that tests can be changed and dogs could be rerun. Um, bring that back. Let's watch this black lab run the series. Again, this series is a walk-up double. The memory bird in this test is thrown out of a low-lying device using electronics rather than a big manned gun station. This gave the appearance of a duck being flushed wild out of the field. The go bird was thrown right to left. Dog. No problem on the marks for this dog, so it will move over to run the blind. The dog starts on a bad line, fading with the factor of the terrain, sloping right to left, far left of where the blind is planted. The green line represents the actual line to the blind. The handler is attempting to challenge the blind and to get the dog on line to the blind. Unfortunately, in this case, Over. while the dog is taking most of the whistles, there are just too many cast refusals oh. for the judges. Oh. Here is a second dog running the same blind. This dog fights the factor of the sloping terrain better than the first dog. As a result, the handler was able to get the dog to the blind with only a few casts and minimal refusals. The judges scored this as a very strong senior level blind. I think that almost every junior has touched their dog before they take the bird. Or the ones that are so used to training and saying, good boy, that is a real, a real no-no. And they all do it, most of it's unconscious. I don't know how many of them, you can't touch your dog till you're, you know, till you're done. The other thing, if I was a, to give any of these handlers a hint, don't line your dog up 
to the winger if you can. Now, junior dogs, you probably can't, but the senior. Line them up more toward where the bird's going to end up because people are, have their dog this way. They, the bird lands over here, and the dog's already headed this direction. And their first couple steps are going to be offline it, it, all the time. Um, the other thing is, especially on blinds, after you get in the perfect place to send your dog to a blind, put your dog there. You move over two steps and put the dog in the perfect place line to the blind because people are sending their dogs right into clumps of, of grass or all kinds of stuff on the shore and they don't understand why their dog goes crooked. I think that those two things can help a dog succeed and the, that people don't pay any attention to it. Oh, the other thing, with juniors, I like to tell them don't do anything today that you haven't practiced with your dog. It doesn't matter what you've seen anybody else do, and if it works for them, if you haven't practiced it with your dog, don't try it here, because it's never going to work. And, and you'll see them dogs going out there, and the person says something, the dog says, huh? And it, it doesn't work. They have to relax and breathe. It helps if they breathe. That's about it. I had, I had two role models when I started, and I learned so much just by watching their, the way they handled their dogs. The first one told me, when you're done, you're supposed to be like a poacher. The less you say to your dog, the better. So your dog should be trained so that you have to say very little to it, because the more you say to them, the more they ignore you. And that's pretty much true. Yep. But, and I think everybody should have to go to a judge's seminar before they run a dog because they really don't know what the judges are looking we for. We have to change the name of that. That's the reason. It should be the handlers and judges seminar. Yeah. Well, now they can just watch this. Yeah, now well, they, they can just watch, watch us. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I actually, don't know how, you're right. how good that is. Yeah. And remember, everybody, read the rule book, train with people better than you are, and volunteer to take the birds at a hunting snow. You'll learn a heck of a lot doing those three things. You come out of the, the holding blind, there is a bucket up there. You don't have to sit on the bucket. I'm just kind of marking the line with that. If you want to sit on it, you're free to sit on the bucket. It's your choice. We'll call for the birds. One, two, we'll release you on your number. Go get the, those marks, any order, when it's coming back from the second bird. The diversion bird will go off. This senior water test is a bit more complicated than most, so a diagram is probably in order. This test will be a real challenge for the dogs because of a big diversion bird and the need to be steady for a flyer on the water twice. The dog will be brought out of the holding blind to the line. This is indicated on the diagram in yellow. The memory bird in blue on the diagram is thrown out of a big winger from on top of a hillside. The flyer, indicated in white on the diagram, is the go bird and is thrown from the end of the peninsula out into the open water. When the dog is on the way back from retrieving the memory bird, a huge arching diversion bird is thrown right to left, landing just off the left side of the peninsula. This is indicated in red on the diagram. Two shots are fired during the diversion. The first comes from the station throwing the diversion. The second is a diversion shot coming from the area where the blind is planted. It's coming out in the second bird regardless of which order yeah. you pick it up? Yeah. Okay. And then um, you give, give us those birds. 
go for that ribbon. And as soon as he said, we'll run that line. That will be hot the whole time. If your dog is over there during the marks, <laughs> sure, you're you're real, you're you're not help you there. After that, the handler moves to run the blind. This is indicated in green on the diagram. The test concludes with the dog needing to honor to the right of the working dog. This is a real test of control and steadiness for the dogs. Remember, this will be the second time in this test where the dog needs to be steady for those tempting flyers. Let's watch this first dog run the marks and diversion. This series is not a walk up. Notice that the handler checks with the honor dog handler to be sure that she is ready. That's a good thing because this honor dog was very close to breaking. And remember the dog is actually honoring a flyer, which is a real breaking temptation. Set. The honor dog. dog creeps forward, but does not break. It is taking a little while for the dog to retrieve the bird. The reason is that this bird was not fully dead. The shooters did not get a good shot on it. Although hard to see in the video, the bird was still alive in the water and avoiding the dog. Eventually, the dog won that standoff, but this situation really shows the importance of getting your dog on shot flyers before entering a senior test if possible. This dog knew how to deal with a live bird. The dog takes a good initial line to the memory bird. But suddenly, the dog heads to land to the right of the mark. The handler has to handle the dog to the memory bird. As we have previously covered, handling on a mark is allowed, but will lower marking and perseverance scores significantly. Here comes the high arcing diversion with a shot, and another diversion shot coming from the area of the blind. In this case, the handler needed to handle the dog to the diversion. Remember, the diversion is not considered a mark, so even though this handler had to handle on the memory bird, handling on the diversion is okay and won't result in any reduction in score unless the dog does not display trainability on the handle. Sit. Joker. Let's watch this Joker, I mean dog, run this series. He is certainly wound up and ready to go. Better be ready for that flyer temptation. This was a borderline controlled break. Did the handler stop the dog's forward progress with the verbal sit command, or was the dog stopping on its own, which would have just been considered creeping? It's very close. Either is not a disqualification, but is scored differently.
tío. Tío, let's go, hurry up. Another bird. Tío. 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 Here is a better view of the diversion. Let's watch the water blind. This one was a difficult one to film without being a distraction to the dog, so it may be hard to see clearly. The dog takes a line to the right of the line of the blind, cheating the shore. Once in the water, the dog does a nice job of getting to the blind. Because the dog cheated the shore, it will be scored lower in perseverance, but still did well enough to earn a passing score from the judges. I tell I tell very nervous handlers try not to be nervous. I said at this point it's between God and your dog, and and if you've trained the way you're supposed to train to get you to this point, trust your dog, right. and enjoy watching him run. Calm down. You don't need to be all all nervous because. If, if, you, if you did the foundation work and you did it right, your dog's going to be successful. Yeah. You miss anything? I hope not. I just have to laugh at that last comment. What? <laughs> About who said it. Oh, hey. <laughs> I'm much more calm now than I used to be.